Welcome back to the jointhetrades.com interview series, where we talk to tradespeople and learn more about successful career paths straight from the source. With us today is Mark Reed. Mark is in marine transportation with 23 years of experience in the trade. Mark, how'd you get started? Uh, basically, I got out of the service, had no direction in life, um, just like many service members, and um, needed a job really quick. Um, my family was in the petroleum industry, and I know I did not want to go to college because I could not sit through long lectures every day. So um, basically, I went to a job fair in Houston, Texas, right outside of Houston, Texas, Pasadena, to be exact, and they had a job fair for um, shore tanking service. Basically, you're loading and unloading chemical barges, and they trade. They trained you on the spot. I filled out an application on the spot. They seen that I was in the services, said, you're in service? Yes. And they said, can you pass a drug test? Yes. Next day, I went and had a drug test, no interview, and I was on a barge two days later, loading and unloading. And uh, so that was how I got started. And I did that for about a year and a half. And through that year and a half, you get to know guys like on boats and that are pushing these barges in and out of port. So um, I was going through a divorce and I needed to get away from town. And I knew that the best way was to go back out on the boats. And I went on the boats and the rest is history. It just kind of moved up through my career to where I'm at now, where I'm driving the boat around. So for the sake of, we joked about this a little bit. First of all, thank you for your service. Which branch were you in? Army. Army? My husband My husband as well. Yes. Um, so thank you for your service. For the sake of everyone listening to this, uh, you know, we joked a little bit before we got on, before we started recording, uh, you know, you say marine transportation. I immediately think you know, marine equals sea and ocean. Uh, and uh, so you had to educate right. me a little bit. Can you share with the group uh, marine transportation? Back it up to what is it? What are we talking about? Well, it, it's basically anything that floats on water. Um, to transport a lot of goods, you have to you, you transport more goods on water than you do on land. Like everybody thinks rail car, trucks, pipeline, etc. There's also another aspect of transportation and it's through the through the mississippi and all its tributaries the ohio river uh etc that feed basically into the mississippi it's like a main artery for transportation of goods such as uh corn soybean wheat petroleum uh metals whatever coal anything yeah coal is really big yeah pretty much anything that you see and hear of going out on ships Mm -hmm. um, a lot of what we load on barges gets exported onto ships that go overseas to other countries. So, and also can also go into other states that are on the East Coast, which is would make a lot of bulk uh, make sense for bulk transportation to go by ship around from, say, the Gulf of Mexico up to Maine. Mm -hmm. uh, just say Maine for for instance. Um, yeah. It's just a different way of transportation of goods is, is all it is. And it's by boat and by barge. Mm -hmm. So you work rivers. I work the rivers. Yes. I, yeah. I, I'm what they call brown water. Uh, you have blue water, which is your ships and, and whatnot. And I work what they call brown water, which is the muddy Mississippi. Yeah, so the uh, I assume the Mississippi has been a, a main thoroughfare for for moving product for hundreds of years at this point and still continues to be to this day. Right. Um, the one person that made it popular was uh, Tom Sawyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was one of the pioneers in, in the shipping industry along the Mississippi river. Sure. Yeah. That's what I, of course, like at first, what I think about is, yeah, I mean, uh, steamboats and paddle boats going up at this point, it's pretty interesting that mm -hmm. we're still maintaining that amount of traffic to this day. It's that it's still the, 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 main way to get product around through the country. And that people don't even think of it. It's an entire industry full of all, with all kinds of careers associated with it. And it's it, just not even, yeah. Oh, it, the, and it's not even just driving a boat. It's like I said, when I started was a uh, shore tanking, which basically I was on call and I would get called out to go load a barge at a certain facility. 
So that's part of the marine industry where I'm actually on land and I'm at home. They can call me when I'm asleep in bed to come out and load a barge at two, three o'clock in the morning. Um, there's also construction, uh, building bridges. You know, you have to build the center span of the bridge, which goes across water. So you're looking at that aspect. Um, core engineers working for the core engineers, which is a government based job, uh, building revetments, which is working along the bank of the river, basically, um, locks and dams, you know, there, there's so many careers outside of just bar building barges or building what we call tow and also, uh, driving a boat. There, there's hundreds of jobs that okay, so, go outside so you, of um, driving a boat. Mm-hmm. So you were fortunate enough to get started pretty quickly. Uh, I'm, I'm sure your service helped when, on some level, the fact that they knew like, hey, this guy can work hard and is, you know, dedicated and has proven himself. Right. Um, how, what kind of training did you have? You obviously, did you learn this all on the job or did they have to send you away for any kind of extraneous training at all? Everything was learned on the job. Um uh, the company that I started out with, um, they're now called SGS, but they were Petroleum, Petroleum Service Corporation. They're a, mom, mom and, a pretty big mom and pop shop uh, company that had their own training facility, which was uh, the Coast Guard approved course. Um, it was, I believe it was seven days. Yeah, it was seven days of an approved course of basically learning the ins and outs of loading a barge and also the Coast Guard regulations uh, as far as like their laws and whatnot. Basically, don't put the product in the water <laughs> is the biggest part that they they emphasize. <laughs> but uh, but um, it, it, there's other parts to it as well. But they uh, but yeah. It, it was basically on the job training and then they provided their own schooling, which is what I really liked. Um, and they paid me for it too. They paid me to, for my hotel room and they paid me to sit there in a classroom. Now we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. We're always happy to hear that. I mean, we talk obviously about how, how in debt so many, so many people are from going to school and, and uh, not even working mm-hmm. in the career that they went to school for. And one of the great advantages right. of some of the trades is that they're able to provide you um, right. not only with education, but with paid education, which is pretty extraordinary. Right. I'm sure everyone out right. there is happy to, happy to hear that. Hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so walk us through what a day is like for you at this point. Now, obviously you've got 23 years of experience, so you, you know, you have a whole lot of time, but it's up to you whether you'd like to start with someone who's a beginner or where you're at now, but just give us an idea of what, uh, what a day would be. Uh, basically, uh, if you want to start out back when I was a deckhand, um, uh, basically you wake up and you work from 6am to 6pm. And uh, you start out just like any other day, eat your breakfast, drink your coffee, whatever you have to do to wake up. And then you go up and you just start your daily cleanup exercises, you know, like sweep them off the wheelhouse for for the captain uh, all the way down to the galley, clean up the galley after breakfast. And then there's basic stuff that you do throughout. Um, if you're in, in town or in port, whatever you want to call it, um, you're out there building tow. You're putting these barges together. You, you can put anywhere between two to, uh, I've seen 40 barge tows coming up from uh, New Orleans to uh, Memphis. Um, so basically that is equivalent to, what is it? 40 acres of land. If you have a 40 barge tow. Wow. And it's crazy. It, it is That's crazy. And it is long huge. Time and it's on the water and it's on a it, river. It oh my huge. gosh. Yes. Wow. Yes. And that just shows you how small we are in this big world. <laughs> no <laughs> you can push those kidding. Barges. So oh my gosh. You, you say deck hands though and I out there building the Sorry, you, you say deck hands and I, I immediately because if I'm not from the industry, and so I want you to know what happens in my brain is what I hope happens in other people's brains. And I can't be guaranteed that that's true. I know yeah. you say deckhand and I immediately think pirates and like, you know, ships and, and things. And I'm just like, it, it sounds, uh, it sounds more fascinating, even though I know that deckhand is the entry level position. The title's still pretty cool. I, it's just me, isn't it? I, I, I knew it. it. 
I, I knew that's what she was thinking about. I actually thought about it for a moment. Mark, you won't believe, I had to talk her out of wearing an eye patch and a hook, and a hook for this interview. She was so excited. Yeah, yeah. I'm one finger, I'm four fingers away to get into my hook, so. There we go. Oh, man. <laughs> No, that is of all things to smash my finger, or cut my finger on. I cut it cutting cucumbers the other day. So oh. <laughs> you got to come up with a cooler so, story. Anyways, a cooler story. Yeah, well, I'm pretty simple. I like to cook. So <laughs> my wife said, "Hey, can you uh, can you uh, cut up the cucumber?" And I said, "Sure." And I looked down, and my finger was in the knife. Oh. So, no. It was oh, no. it was not it was not pretty, but uh, but anyways, going back to being a deckhand and every day, <laughs> uh, if you're out there, you're helping the, you're helping what they call the first mate, uh, basically putting these barges together. You're these you can imagine slinging seventy five pound ratchets and uh, forty pound wires, you know, uh, and snatch them up and then having to tighten them down to to where they won't shift and move around as they're in transit and if. They shift and move around in transit, and they break loose. Then it is all bad. It it creates a big mess. So um, yeah, it puts the product it in the water. Creates a big hazard. What's that? It said it puts the product yeah, it, in the water. It'll basically put the product. Yes, and it it can also sink boats, other boats, and also kill other people. Okay, okay, so, <laughs> so it's a big deal. I, I don't want to scare other people away, but you know it it. it it is what it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat, you know, the importance of actually being a deckhand. Um, mm -hmm. They they are a huge part of the industry. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to help these guys through uh, letting them know that, hey, you are appreciated and you are not exactly what we would consider a, a bottom feeder in the industry. Yeah. You are. You play a huge role in what we do. So you yeah, actually make great. my job look easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. I mean, um, whenever you're in a in a work environment with with everyone, all different levels on the t on the totem pole, actually respecting each other, it's always more you know better symbiotic relationship, better mm -hmm. for the better for the right. work in general. Okay, so you're um, th first of all, in, in, this is incredible that the, these barges are so massive, and obviously they're being are they're being pushed, correct, or are they being pulled? Correct. They're they're being pushed. Um, they do get pulled whenever they go they go offshore. Um, they do have barges that go offshore for um, the mud that they use for drilling. That's another aspect of the marine industry is your drilling industry. Um, the mud is used for basically like a lubricant for the drill bits. Um, mm -hmm. When they send them out, they'll tow them. They'll actually. This is where the term towboat comes into play, is that they will tow them behind them on a on a halister line. And on a towing lead, um, basically, oh, okay. when the water's choppy and the water's rough, it basically levels the levels it out, and you're not you're not breaking loose from that barge. You, that barge is basically free floating with you towing it. Hmm. So okay, so you're then you're then you're on this you're on this boat, and you're obviously in the you're in the you have a cabin or what everyone's together in the tow area, correct? And you're pushing this massive right. load with you, and you're headed right. generally how many how many mile or how many miles are you headed distance wise? Are we talking weeks here, days? How many how many days on end? You basically have to have patience. Um, let's see. Let's just say mile one on the Mississippi River to mile nine eighty five, so that's nine hundred and eighty five miles to um, to the mouth of the um, Ohio River. I'm trying to think, um, you're you're looking at about nine hundred and eighty five miles to the mouth of the Ohio River, which is the halfway point between uh, between uh, Cairo and and uh, Wycliffe, Kentucky, to um, or basically, it's the halfway point between, I'm trying to remember here, New Orleans to St. Paul, Minnesota. Okay. And so, so you're looking at about over 1,800 miles of river just on the Mississippi River alone. So, right. it, and you average four miles an hour, five miles an hour. So, how long? So, are, but are you pushing product that far? And one is that common, yes. or do you do segments of the river? 
Uh, you do segments. You have other drops along the way that okay. um, you drop barges off. Uh, th- this is going from south to north, uh, traveling north. Um, but usually what we do is we'll bring empties from the south up to the north to load, say, with grain, and then we head up back down south. It's basically the, the way the we move grain. Uh, my industry that I am in right now, I am in the fueling industry. I'm basically a floating gas station. So mm. uh, that's my that's my role in this whole whole process. But I have been on those boats that were pushing 30, 40 barges. Okay, so I have questions. You have so you're going four or five miles an hour and you've got to get mm-hmm. several miles under you. And you say patience. Like, is this what are you doing all that time? <laughs> What do you, cause patience is something that I'm still working on. We all have a thing that we, uh, we work on, but do you, can you read right. books? Can you watch? Right. They, do you, uh, what do you do? If you, excuse me. Let me interrupt Mark. Well, if, P- if you're please, off, go ahead. please tell Nicole that you have people walking the plank. That's what she <laughs> wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have been known to jump off the boat whenever we're pushed into the bank. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> for man overboard drills more than anything. <laughs> I knew it. Those are fun. <laughs> yes. But uh but no, uh there's always something to do on a boat. There there's always something that has to be done to keep up maintenance on a boat because the boat is the lifeline of that 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 tow. It it's mm-hmm. what gets that tow from point A to point B. So there's always work that needs to be done, whether it's basic maintenance on a generator that's down because you know, you you have two different generators that you swap on and off, and then you service on the generator. If something breaks, then you have to know how to fix it. You you assist the chief engineer, which is which he's basically the guy back in the days with the, would shove the coal into the mm-hmm. steam engine. You know, that would get the steam engine going. You know, so he was your chief engineer, and you you assist him in anything that he needs. You know, you're out there tightening up tow as as you're traveling and you're twisting and turning on those barges. Those barges shift and those wires get loose. You go back out there and you just tighten them back down. There, there's always something to do on a boat when you're on watch. Now, when you're off watch, then that's where you can watch TV. You can play your Xbox. You can play your PlayStation. You can talk on your phone. You can do do the things that you do every day when mm-hmm. you're you're off watch. You have six hours to do it. You work six hours on, six hours off. Oh, okay, and, and it, it 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 gives you kind of a you have your own bunk room in most cases, and you you don't have a roommate basically. You just have a next door neighbor that mm-hmm. you have to worry about. Um, they feed you. You can assist the cook in cooking if you enjoy cooking on your off watch. You know you can assist the cook in any way that you need to. Um, it's it's there's always something to do that you want to do. Fascinating. So. Go ahead. So you have, um, a, so there's a deckhand you, you were speaking about, and there's a first mate. And is the first mate just above the deckhand, or is there, how does the sequence work? Your, your first mate, you have you have a deckhand, you have a lead man, and you have a first mate, or a, what we just call a mate. First mate is kind of irrelevant. Uh, he is basically the deck boss. You see on uh, the Deadliest Catch where you have a deck boss, that's basically your mate. Uh, he's in charge of making sure that the boat's supplied with its supplies that it needs. Uh, make sure that everybody is doing what they're supposed to be doing. He, he delegates jobs as to the jobs that are needed, whatever your strengths are. Uh, and he reports it directly to the captain. So uh, that's that's his position. And you are, what is your position now? I am a boat operator. I've been a boat operator now for 13 years. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So I've, I've worked my way up from the bottom hmm. to, to now where I'm at. So I'm about as high up as I can go without going to the office. <laughs> okay. So there's, um, obviously, Hey, it's awesome that you get your own, you get your own room. That's actually, you know, a perk of the job. Mm-hmm. That's a nice thing. Um, how many people are on this, uh, are on one of these at, at any given time? I mean, is it, does it vary according to the load or is it just, there's always a certain amount? It varies, uh, company to company and also the size boat and, and tow that you are pushing. Um, when I first started, we were pushing, 
what they call a three piece unit tow, which means the barges all matched up the same way. They were the same dimensions over and over and over. Um, but we only had four guys, uh, on deck. We had two, two deck hands and two, what, what would be considered a, a mate, but we were lead tankermen. So we were basically in charge of our deck on our watch. And then we had two pilots. So six guys total on the boat. Um, now, when you talk to the bigger boats, which are your 10 fives, which is 10,500 horsepower boats, you're looking at anywhere between nine to 12 people on, on the boat at one time. Wow. It's actually, um, I, I, I think, I don't know how you feel, Nicole. I think I'm surprised how few people are running this massive operation. I mean, you, you guys got to really, <laughs> you really got to work together. And like you said, there, there's always something to be doing for eight, for eight, people to be running this massive operation is is impressive it it's trying to run a well-oiled machine and a lot of times the machine breaks down and you got to have somebody that knows what they're doing and how to fix it so and that's why you get these deck hands out here and you train them and kind of show them the way and you just help them out as you as they go along yeah all right, so you're going, obviously, you're going long distances and going four or five miles per hour uh, for all intents and purposes along the way. So you're you're spending weeks on one trip, correct? We're talking? Correct. Yeah. Correct. And that Usually, would be, yeah. um, you work on a rotated schedule of either day for day, which is basically comes out to six months out of the year, or you can do day for half a day, uh, 28 and 14 days, uh, 20 and 10 uh, I work a 14 and seven. I'm not on a live on. I am fortunate enough to not live, work on a live on boat. I go home every 12 hour shift. So, um, the, there are different schedules that you can work. Um, like I said, and 30, 30 is nice for being out there. You're six months out of the year and not many jobs allow six months out of the year. <laughs> yeah. And part of that, I assume, is the fact that you've got so much time in that you're able to kind of choose at this point, seniority wise, what what kind of what kind of trip you'd like. Yeah, correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah, it it you put in time, it 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 pays off. That's for sure. Um, guys don't understand patience and putting in your time is so key to this industry and and any trade industry. In any industry, uh, that's where you benefit trade. the most. It, Yes, and you put in your time, and and you know you you can be what what I like to call a paper chaser. You know you can chase the money all the time, but you're never going to be happy. Mm-hmm. And if you don't enjoy what you're doing, and you're not happy because the pay's never there, because those guys that that chase paper, they they don't understand that there's so much more to give. There, you can be so much more happier once you set up a routine for yourself, and that's where you get the patience and ride it out and move up in the company and stay with a company, stay with the company and be loyal to the company and the company will pay off in the long run. Yeah. I'm glad someone, one of the last interviews we did, some, a a gentleman had mentioned that, that he just, you know, for a long time was chasing kind of the idea of money. And then eventually was like, you know what, I'm, I like this. I'm happy doing this. And that matters more than so many other things. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that I'm actually content, I enjoy my job. I go to work every day. I'm not miserable is a, is a huge factor. Right. I've never right. met anybody who chases money, who m- made enough money. I've never met anybody. I, I've, and I've met never. millionaires and it's never enough if they're chasing money. So, right. uh, and yeah, I remember he were talking about crew. It was, uh, he was a heavy equipment operator and, um, yeah, he, you know, the, the point was these these careers are still really well-paying careers. And you have a really great lifestyle. Uh, and if you're chasing a good lifestyle and instead of chasing money, then th- it does balance out. You're still making great money. Uh, you're just not chasing money. Right. Uh, and you learn to adapt with your money. Uh, that's one thing I learned through talking. <laughs> Fortunately, I have family that is very well, well off as far as... Um, talking with financial advisors and whatnot. They, they even say the same thing, you know, stick with what you got going because we can make you money. And mm-hmm. I've been able to now through three presidencies, three different economies. Um, now I'm looking at retirement in about another 10 years because of listening to this guy and he helped me out and he has managed my money because <laughs> back when I was chasing paper, 
chasing the money. I was not good with money at all. Mm. And I wanted to live the party style. <laughs> sure. Sure. I'm, sorry. I'm just picturing now that this kind of like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> spreading the dollar bills in the air kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of that going on. There's well, so that. let's talk about it for somebody who's young and wanting to get into this career. Um, they're going to start off as a deckhand, very it's a vital role in the, in the uh, industry and also has a lot of opportunity for upward mobility. Um, what can they expect to start at? And then what can they expect to be earning in the, over, let's say, the first 10 years of their career, depending on, you know, which direction they want to go with it? Um, let's see. Uh, starting out, it varies, of course, company to company, naturally. Um, sure. I would say day for if you work in day for day, you're looking at about starting out forty thousand, forty eight thousand dollars a year, forty eight okay. to fifty thousand dollars a year, which is not bad for somebody that has no college education. Most guys out here don't even have a GED, making that That's, much. Yeah, I and mean, you have awesome. guys in college. Yeah, you have guys struggling fresh out of college to even make that amount of money. My salary, and, my and starting they have salary. Huge school. I'm sorry, but, I. I, I Sorry to interrupt you, but my starting salary coming out of, out of college, because I did go to college. That's why I'm such a big advocate for the trades, because it was useless. Um, but my right. starting salary coming out of college was $37,000 a year. Yeah, yeah. And and it, it's it, it's so frustrating to hear people coming out of college and, you should go with a trade. You should go with a mm -hmm. trade, because you would never have student loan debt. You have companies that are willing to pay you to go to their school that is approved by a coast by the Coast Guard and DOT for you to take and get paid. You don't have student loan debt. You you can live a debt free life as a as a twenty year old. I mean, we hire people that are like eighteen years old, but we want people that are up in their twenties, a little bit more developed and know what they want, so to speak. Um, but uh, but yeah, you're debt free um, within ten years. I would say you're probably pushing seventy thousand dollars within ten years, seventy five thousand dollars within ten years. And again, somebody with a college education, ten years out of college, is not making seventy five thousand dollars unless they land a, a a job as a CEO or C, you know, which is unheard of for a ten year out of college. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it. The the money's there. It can be there. You just have to know where to go, who to speak to, and always keep your options open. And maintain the fact of be patient as to moving up through the ranks because that is huge. You don't just go from a deckhand to a captain in what we call three hitches, which is your your three different rotations. You you just don't do it. It's it's impossible. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So that's obviously one of the pros of the job right there. And I would say that's a massive pro right. that you can get started at, at such a high rate and, and within a short time move to uh to an extraordinary salary. I mean that, you know, once you're at right. 75, $80,000, I mean, you're living, you know, pretty well and you easily, you support a family nicely on right. that. And, you know, it's like, that's a nice lifestyle. That's right. clearly one of the pros. What are, what are some of the other pro, uh, pros and cons? Um, I would say pros is developing the camaraderie once you get settled into a boat that you actually fit in on. Um, you have kind of a brotherhood. You have kind of a family away from your family. And sometimes it is a very dysfunctional family. So what family is, is a dysfunctional at some yeah, point? That's what I was going to say. Is like dysfunctional family is probably a little bit redundant there. Um, <laughs> every family's got to be right. a little bit. Yeah. Right. Um, probably one of the cons that I would say is your time away from your actual family. Uh, yeah. That was always huge for me, for myself and my wife. Uh, my wife knew when we got married, I was doing this job before I met her. And I, she knew that I loved doing this job and she accepted it. But I told her, I was like, you find me a job on the land doing this in the same industry, making the same amount of money as I do. I will take it. Mm -hmm. And I'll be, I'll be damned. She found one, and within five days, in a newspaper, of all places. <laughs> and so, here I am, you know, sixteen years later with PTO Marine, uh, driving a boat and doing pretty good for myself. 
So. Yeah, because you get to come home every day. So you do. Um, yes. You do one day on, one day off, or like the equivalent of. Uh, but you come home. You work a twelve-hour like, shift. And then uh, you, I, yeah, you do I, I basically work a twelve-hour shift. Okay. And I do fourteen. I work seven days, twelve-hour shifts. Come home every night. For, yeah. For dinner and and sleep on my own bed, and then I do a twenty-four-hour turnaround, and I work seven nights, and then I have a week off. Okay. okay. So, so you've got so got uh, basically I get a week vacation. Of course it's unpaid, but I get a week vacation every third week. I can every do third. whatever I want for <laughs> every third week. And then if I nice. decide to take vacation, I get two weeks. Two weeks in a row and some guys have, have it planned out where they don't have to come back to work for a whole month. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I mean, even just to have a week, you can accomplish so much in a week. I mean, you can make a nice trip, really, truly, in right. a week's time. It gives you a whole lot of freedom, and you, right. you're constantly having that, which is pretty extraordinary. Specifically, I imagine, when you do have a family that, you know, you want to spend time with. Right. Cool. But, um, but yeah, so, uh, time spent away from family is the worst thing that I've ever had to deal with out here. And that that... That trumps a lot of things, a lot of good stuff for me because now that I'm able to be at home, my family is everything to me now. Mm -hmm. And I've missed out on a lot of things that I'm no longer allowed to miss, uh, that I can't miss out on anymore. Mm -hmm. So, which is a a great, great thing. Yeah, for sure. So in your um, in your expertise, then, uh, for anyone out there who's listening, you, you know, who's who's best suited for this? Who's the who's the person that you go, you know what, you'll nail this. This is right up your alley. Someone that is lost, especially military um, that is lost when they come out, they don't understand where they don't know where to go, what direction they want to go in. Um, just like myself, you know, I, I knew I didn't want to go to college, but I had very limited um trade other than in high school um because my job in the military was infantry I, all i did was shoot guns and blow things mm-hmm. up that was fun but it didn't really offer me a lot of trade <laughs> but but uh but basically somebody out of the military that just wants to get into a career um give it a shot that's all i can mm-hmm. say is anybody that wants to do it give it a shot you you'll be surprised on, on how many how many veterans we are getting out into this industry. Um, core engineers, they're hurting for people. And you're in the military, go work for the core engineers. They will hire you in a heartbeat. Um, but uh, let's see, young, out of the military, single, I highly recommend somebody that's single um, that wants to establish a career. Um, it's, it's perfect for you. Um, if being... If so, just supporting your family is is enough, and you feel like you can be gone, then by all means do it. Uh, if you're strong minded, if your your wife is strong minded and can handle you being gone, because it 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 takes a strong woman to understand that a man's out there for thirty days, you know, and and also for a man to understand that his wife is out here. Because now we're seeing a huge influx of women coming out here. Cool and. When I first started, there was maybe maybe a handful of women, and you never seen them. You never saw them out on tow. They they were hiding someplace. But now, women are getting out there. They're they're tightening ratchets. They're throwing ratchets around. They're they're running with with the guys, and they're working circles around a lot of guys. Believe it or not. <laughs> so uh, so now I have to throw in women into this because that's kind of where we're headed. Uh, and I'm and I'm glad to see. I'm glad to see. So there, there's there's two now. I have to include the husbands. <laughs> there's right. Got their wives out there on a boat. <laughs> so so you know it, it it's a growing industry. It, it's still a growing industry, and we need more people. And the more that we transport, the more people we need to bring in. And mm-hmm. our and our economy right now. Some people say it's bad. Some people say it's good. I can tell you right now, if people think it's bad, I'm seeing otherwise right now. And we are needing people. We are needing people bad. And just nobody wants to work. Nobody wants to schedule. And it 
it's just one of those things with the job that you have to do. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, certainly, the fact that you bring up the, the people that that uh, have been in the military in in one field or another, and uh, and looking for on some level, I suppose that camaraderie is nice as well, huh? You, I mean, you're kind of used to that in the military. You're used right. to having your brother's back or right. your sister's back, for that matter. And then you're kind of if right. you're um, there are a lot of jobs suddenly that 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 is becomes a void in your life if you move out of that right and you can something you miss and right. we, as you said you guys are close you're relying on each other to you know keep each other safe so that camaraderie is there and you become a, a basically right. a family right right and you know i back when i was actually working on live on boats and we started getting people that were getting out of the military uh, that were fresh out of iraq or afghanistan they had no idea what they wanted to do in life. And they just happened to stumble on this job because they, they lived in uh, Cairo, Illinois, which is one of the poorest uh, towns in Illinois, which used to be a major hub until the 93 flood of uh, marine traffic. Um, There's nothing there. And the only thing they know is the river life. And they come out and I had guys that were fresh out of the military. And because I understood them, it made their life and their transition into civilian life so much better. So um, we're starting to see more veterans come out. We're starting to see more women uh, naturally. And we're actually starting to see a lot of diversity getting up into the wheelhouse, uh, which, which is really, really huge because this industry was always known as the white man industry. Mm -hmm. You know, it was the white guys that were out here on the boats and the barges and, making the good money and living the good life and black people that came out, they stayed on the deck. And now I'm starting to see more and more people of color up in the wheelhouse, talking to them on the phone, you know, with my job, talking to them on the radio. And, and, and this industry is growing and it's more diverse and it's more inclusive than any other industry that I have seen. That's fantastic. That's, that's what I love to hear. Just, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's certainly a nice thing. It's nice. Um, I'm glad you actually mentioned that because, of course, we're we're living in a multinational world. So, you know, and any, anyone out there that's listening right. might have might have questioned that, like, well, wait a minute, is there a place for me? And if you're finding that at this point it's becoming more and more uh, prevalent that you've got a, a multicultural right. family, that's a nice thing for sure. Right. I mean, I've, so, I've got a guy right now that I'm getting ready to train in the wheelhouse like, that immigrated here from uh, – Jamaica, of all places. Cool. Now you talk about a language barrier, but he, he's, <laughs> he's picking it up pretty good. He's been out here now for two and a half, three years, and he's already working at being up in the wheelhouse. And he's a hard worker, and he's he's made his earned his keep, and that's that's huge. And he's he's up there, and I'm training him right now, and he's doing fabulous. In fact, he's got about another eight months to go before he uh, gets turned loose. Super cool. That has to be very rewarding for you, I imagine, huh? This, that's yeah, neat. Not, so- I don't look at it as rewarding for me. It's just I'm just I'm just proud to say that I I contributed to it. It's not really I don't consider it rewarding to myself. I the guy earned it. He mm-hmm. he earned it. And anybody that I have turned loose, uh, which this will be like my third guy to turn loose, but. Uh, Anybody that I've turned loose is, I, I'm proud of them for going through what I call hard knocks or training days. <laughs> That's the thing you said earlier is, uh, you know, within 10 years, you'd be earning this, this 75, 80,000, but does it, does it take 10 years every time? Or can that, that um, timeline be reduced based on how, how much effort you want to put in, how much work you want to put in? It, it, it's how much work you want to put in, how much effort you want to put in. Um, it's basically, if you stay on a boat, it's up to the captain's discretion. Okay. Um, he's, if, if, if you put in your time and you put in your, your work ethic and you've shown it and you've proven yourself out here, he will, he will fast track you. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about it. He'll, he'll put your name out there and in, in, in the office and he will say, this guy's ready to come up here and move up to the next step. Mm-hmm. Um, usually Usually it, it takes takes about 10 years um, okay. 
for to develop a really seasoned deckhand to, okay. to get to the spot. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of that's safety too, just needing to understand the ins and outs of uh, the the position from a safety standpoint before you can progress to, to any other role. Uh, I say I sure that yes. I'm sure that I'm sure of that. I've just imagined it. Don't just, just let's go with it. It's about safety and how to wield your hook and with just one eye and a wooden leg. It's it gets yeah. I know. <laughs> don't don't kick them with the peg leg overboard. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, no one here is going to argue with you, Nikki. <laughs> um, awesome, man. This is this is great information. Um, so let's break it down to this at this point, if it works for you. If someone out there is interested, how would you suggest this is the best way for them to get that ball rolling? Um, I can give a list of, of companies. That, that's basically what I can do. Um, we're everywhere. We are hiring everywhere. Um, you have, let's see, Ingram Barge Company is a huge one. Um, Archer Daniels Midland. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of their agricultural department, but they're known for ag departments. But they also have a shipping industry on or shipping department on the on the river. Um, ADM Arco, um, all the major websites, and you can just Google maritime industry jobs and they will pop up I, i've shared with nicole a couple of the companies um on tiktok uh, kirby marine showing some of their schools that they had blessing marine has has uh their own schools uh, archer daniels midland has their own school uh ingram marquette uh, blessing marine uh, like i said uh, there's just so many companies out here you just Google maritime industry companies and they, they will pop up. And those schools that you're talking about, uh, all these companies that have their own school, are those schools that somebody can, uh, they go pay for it to send themselves through school or is this, they're signing up to be an employee and then the employer sends them through the school? Uh, the employer, basically you sign up to work for the company yep. and then they'll send you through their quote unquote deckhand school. Okay. Uh, which basically teaches you their way of laying wires, tightening wires, safety, safety procedures, uh, etc. Um, and then later on in your career, if you decide to stay with that company, you, they have their own tankerman school where you can load and unload chemical barges mm-hmm. through a Coast Guard approved class, or they will send you to school. Because there are other schools um, like, uh, let's see, uh, that are the River School out of Memphis, Tennessee, uh, Hidalgo out of, I believe it's New Orleans, uh, San Jacinto, which is out of Houston, and uh, there's a couple other ones that are out there. Uh, they'll send you to those schools if they don't have their own school, and they're all Coast Guard approved classes, and they the company pays you 100% to go to those schools. But, you know, these there's always a school associated with these classes or with these companies and whether it's a third party school or whether it's the company's own school school i prefer company's own school because some of them will reimburse you the money uh, especially on those third party schools the companies will reimburse you the money up front um mm-hmm. you pay for it you give them a receipt they they turn around and pay pay you back uh, but i prefer the companies that have their own because there's no money exchange you just go and you get paid while you're doing it. Hmm. Hmm. So for yeah, the most part, could... debt free. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. That, yeah. That's great. It gives it gives people out there a lot of food for thought. I mean, we love to hear about the education being included. The, I mean, because the the collegiate system has become such a racket in general right now, and you hear it so much. So, the the fact that someone can so easily get the ball rolling and there's, I mean, you, you mentioned that there's just still so much demand in in the in this trade, right? I mean, there, you're trying to fill spots right. all the time. Yeah, all the time. We, my company, not so much because my company is considered a uh, retirement job, so to speak. Because uh, it's, it's so, it's it, my company is so laid back, and that's why I'm so fortunate to have this position. But, uh, but the actual bigger companies and our, and basically, I call them our customers because that's what they are. They are, they are constantly in need of people. We have guys that are riding over because they're shorthanded. 
And, you know, we have guys riding 60, 70, 80 days just because they don't have anybody to come out and relieve them. Right. And and that, that plays a toll on you. That plays a toll oh, on you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. So this is where well, I listen. In... Sorry. Oh, this is Mark. I know that we're, we follow each other on TikTok. This is why you see me get so frustrated when people say, there's no jobs out there. Nobody's hiring. And I'm like, oh. Like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to, I, like, I can't yell through TikTok. I'm not allowed to just yell at people. So it's so nice to get the validation, get people like you on here and other people in the comments thread saying like, hey, we're hiring. <laughs> there, there's a guy on TikTok. His name is Captain J Rock 2020. Um, he is very informative out here uh, to, to promote the industry. And he, what he was saying, and he looked at the, the statistics. We are 40,000 people short of meeting our goals of workers. Right. And that's how massive the marine industry is. And that, that's not just counting like working on live on boats. That's the other aspects of the job or of the industry. Um, so that ought to tell you that there's a need, there's a push for it. And if companies don't want to hire them. That's on the company. I mean, it, they're there. And the companies know that they're there and they know that they're shorthanded. So they're going to hire you. They're, they're going to hire you. It just, yeah. how's your interview skills? What's your, what's your resume like? Can you pass a drug test? Cause that's huge. That, mm-hmm. That's the hugest part, especially with the push for recreational marijuana and uh, medical marijuana. Um, insurance companies do not want to pay the, or companies don't want to pay the premium to have that insurance for their, their employees. And, Sometimes you just have to. What's more important to you, living living life or just having fun? And I shouldn't ask this, chose, but um, do they do random drug tests as well? Because if we're just talking about an yes. entry drug to, oh, okay, okay, good, good. Yes, <laughs> yes, they they do. I used to think because I I worked at jobs when I was a kid that you know yeah I was subjected to a random drug test, but I never ever seemed to get a drug test out here. I I drug test at least three times a year. That's that's on the low end. I've I've drug tested twelve times in one year. So they they do randoms, and when they say they're random, you may have gotten a drug test last quarter, but you're probably going to get tested again. <laughs> Bet on the next quarter getting tested. Well, that makes sense. I mean, it, for sure, as, as dangerous as the job is, you certainly don't right. want anyone inebriated in any manner. And, mm-hmm. and, and you know, because you've right. only got, like you said, teams of five to 10 people on this on this boat and you can't have people um, putting other people's lives in jeopardy. So mm-hmm. and it's nice to know for the rest right. of us, too, that, <laughs> you know, if you're out in the Mississippi, that someone, you know, is not incapacitated while they're driving a barge. <laughs> 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 exactly. I mean, you don't want your airplane pilot to be drunk whenever he's driving that airplane, right? Right. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, this has been awesome, man. This information is great. And I'm sure people are going to be fascinated. Um, The pay sounds great. And the camaraderie sounds great. And Mm -hmm. it looks like there's a whole lot of opportunities, which there are kind of across the trades in general, which is what we're doing here. Um, But there sounds like there's some great opportunities. Is there do you want to plug your company while you're here or anyone you want to make a shout out to? Yeah, Shout out to my company. Yeah, uh, it's PTL Marine. Um, we are we are under the umbrella of Pilot Thomas Logistics. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense, but basically, Pilot Truck Stops is where we started. Uh, mm. My company owns all the Pilot and Flying J's uh, truck stops. That's where we get our diesel fuel. Uh, we we mine, we drill, we frack, we refine all of our diesel fuels so everything's done in-house um, it's, it's a great company to work for uh they i started out with economy boat store and they bought us out and i can tell you that was one of the best moves that we that we've done that i i am truly actually blessed to have because they they have been really good to me they have really been good to me. and they they will be good to anybody else that comes that decides to come out here <laughs> Cool. Man, they 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 owe you a uh, uh, advertising bonus for that one. <laughs> That's a good plug. That was a good I'm, plug. I'm supposed to be, yeah, I'm supposed to be their uh, ambassador on on uh, social media, but I'm kind of slack in that department. 
I feel like I'm too busy for it. So <laughs> well, this is a big step in that direction. Yeah, you just nailed yes. it now. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, brother. Yeah. Thank you so much for your uh, for your time and your kindness and your information. Uh, we really we really yeah. greatly appreciate it, and I'm sure listeners do as well. Nicole, anything else to add? I just really appreciate you coming on. Uh, I know that yeah, we yeah. found each other through TikTok, and we are uh, right. fighting the good fight to get the word out there. And everybody who agrees to get it, we know it's nerve wracking too to get on these uh, interviews. So I just really appreciate you, and I hope you change yeah, someone's life. This is life. my first one. I'm not gonna. Uh, this is my first one. I'm pretty nervous here. You so did. I, I get you're, really busy, this has so. been great. <laughs> now you did great. Yeah, now your company's well, gonna thanks. expect you. Your company's gonna expect I you to know. do more now. I know. Yeah, they probably want me to go to college first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming, folks. We'll see you next time. <laughs>